Hello, hello, hello. It's Martin here with the second of my property clinics. I um, do Ask Martin Mondays where it's your chance to ask me any questions you like uh, from the world of property or homes under the hammer or just anything. Somebody asked me about pizzas. Well, that's coming up here. Uh, whatever, whatever you want to. I'm here to answer your questions. Obviously got a little uh, bit more time at the moment. <laughs> so they might be longer. <laughs> How long can I talk about pizzas for? Let's have a whole discussion about pizzas. Why not? Uh, that's coming up in a second. Um, don't forget that you can like this video, hopefully, um, and tell your friends, because I need people to subscribe to the channels, uh, this channel, uh, because I haven't got enough subscribers. I need more. If you're a subscriber, subscriber already, I love you. Thank you very much. Uh, but if you tell your friends, that'd be amazing. Yeah, and you can also check out all the various things I do on my property websites, martinrobertspropertytraining.com and uh, martinrobertspropertytraining.com. Uh, UK. I'm also going to be doing some stuff uh, regarding the Vils, my children's book series, uh, which you might want to check out because I'm going to be recording some stories on there for your kids if you've got them in case they're bored. Uh, but for now, it's Ask Martin Monday's questions or just Ask Martin in general. And just to say, you can submit questions whenever you want for me to do these, uh, but I normally sit down on a Monday and spare a bit of time to actually answer them in real time uh, on my Twitter and Instagram. But this is the kind of roundup that we do uh, every week on video. So let's start with a, a question from Foggy Reef. Um, it says, good morning, Martin. I'm a retired builder, uh, but I've never built dry stone walls. Have you ever tried this somewhat skillful trade? Dry stone walling. You know what? I passed somebody who was building a dry stone wall outside a house a few months ago. And they were just sitting there, dum 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 and they were taking a rock, and they were trying it on the dry stone wall, and they were taking another rock. And they were building this dry stone wall, and it was just a small wall outside their house. And I thought, gosh, that looks like a fun thing to do. That just looks like a peaceful, kind of three-dimensional jigsaw fun thing to do. You know what? I would love to do a dry stone wall, and now might be the opportunity. Now may be the opportunity to try something which you haven't tried before. So definitely worth considering. Just do it. Let's grab some rocks and start dun, 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 building the wall. No? <laughs> Can you imagine all these walls building up around gardens around the UK? <laughs> oh dear. Okay, next question from Tracy. Hello, Tracy. Have you ever walked into a property and wanted to walk back out due to the mess people have left? Oh my gosh. It's sometimes it's actually really upsetting because you know that somebody's been living in that house until relatively recently. It is quite scary on some occasions when you just think, oh my golly gosh, somebody was recently living here. And that's, that is quite poignant more often than not. I mean, you know, especially when you walk into a kid's bedroom and there's stuff of theirs left. Um, you know, that that can be really, really, really upsetting. Uh, all you can do is try and help people not get into that situation in the first place if you can. The worst thing is actually pets, animals. If people have had animals in the house and not actually let those animals out, can you imagine for a second the smell and just how disgusting it is? Not good. So on those occasions, we have uh, definitely, we have definitely wanted to leave. And so we have a hammer golden rule when we're filming the show, which is never open the fridge because fridges <laughs> you don't even want to go there adam <laughs> have you ever been caught short and had to use the toilet in one of the homes under the hammer houses well sometimes the toilets when we're filming actually work and that is a great joy good news the toilet's working is something that the director will say as we pull <laughs> pull up otherwise we have to go and find uh, either friendly neighbours or shops nearby that can let us in or whatever. Yeah, the state of some of the toilets is sometimes quite extraordinary. In some ways, you just really don't want to go there. They, they, you wouldn't put any part of your anatomy anywhere near the majority of them. I did do something quite recently about um, avocado bathroom suites, and I did this whole homage. Um, which somebody tried to tell me the other day was jade. I thought, you know, that is just, you know, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. It was an avocado bathroom suite. But I did a very friendly kind of thing about avocado bathroom suites used to be, 
you know, the thing that people wanted and da 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 So have I used the, the toilets in Homes of the Hammer House? As long as they're working, of course, I will use them. But only for number ones. Right, Amy. Hello, Amy. Three bed, three story house, tiny kitchen next to a downstairs loo. Two of the bathrooms upstairs in the house. Thinking purely resale value. Worth knocking through to get a nice size workable kitchen or keeping the downstairs loo. Well, a downstairs loo is nice, but not at the expense of knocking through to create a really nice open plan area. As you know, I am a huge fan of open plan. So in a downstairs area, even a small terraced property can be made to feel enormous if you create that one big living area, which you then walk. I mean, I had some friends who did it in a terraced house, a reasonably sized, relatively, relatively small terraced house, but they knocked all the ground floor through and then they also built a bit of an extension on the back. So you walked into the front door and you have this massive space. Now, most people judge a house by one big room. So, you know, if you live in a nice sized house, you might have one huge, great room. But you could have a really small house and just have that all knocked together to create one room, which is equally as big as the one big room you'd have in an absolutely massive house. And it just gives that feeling of space. And it's likely to be the place where you spend a lot of your time anyway. You know, sacrificing a wall for the sake of smells from the kitchen or whatever the reasons are why people don't, uh, I don't know. Now, obviously, before you start any knocking through work, you need to get uh, a structural surveyor in, a good builder or whoever, just to double check uh, that the walls you're thinking of taking out aren't structural walls, okay? So to answer Amy's question, is it worth purely on a resale point of view knocking through to get a nice size workable kitchen absolutely because your wow factor when you walk through the door and make bear in mind that people choose uh, houses in a like the tiniest amount of time you could possibly imagine like literally five minutes you know less than that two or three minutes literally so as you walk through the door you just get that feeling you go okay right right so if you can grab them straight away good news carl Will there be another series of Homes Under the Hammer? Well, we were in the middle of filming series 25. Obviously, like everything else, that's been put on hold at the moment. But <laughs> God willing, we will definitely be filming another series of Homes Under the Hammer. I was due to be filming this week. Uh, it's been cancelled along with everything else, of course. And once the auctions are back up and running and once we're able to travel and do what we, we need to do, then absolutely uh, another series of Homes Under the Hammer is on the way. We're currently filming series 25. That is due to go to um, 2023. So if we get to 2023, that'll be 20 years of Homes Under the Hammer. So uh, I'm really working hard <laughs> to make sure that happens, which is pretty, pretty awesome. Absolutely awesome. Long may it continue. I love this. Now this is, I think, an idea in its own right. And I want you to help me develop this because this is superb. We've started, this is from Richard, hi Richard. We've started giving estate agents marks out of 10 for beards. Most score terribly. Also mark them down for using was instead of, instead of were. If I was to put this property on the market, were, damn it. Bonus points available for door opening chivalry. Okay, so I reckon we could develop this into a Homes Under the Hammer game. Okay, so when you're watching Homes Under the Hammer, and it may well be that you have more opportunity to watch Homes Under the Hammer uh, than you might have otherwise done, given the current circumstances, why don't you come up with your own set of rules for, um, for Homes Under the Hammer? And so give yourself points for guessing the music, guessing uh, the names of the estate agents, maybe, or the price that was paid at the auction eventually. Um, there's all sorts of ways you could do it. So I think we can have great fun coming up with some games to play while watching Hermes and the Hammer. And it's definitely something that you could get the kids involved with, right? Because I, I am completely aware that keeping the kids entertained at this time is going to be a challenge for everybody, okay? So maybe get them inspired, maybe at 10 to 11 every morning, you sit them down in front of the tally and you play an hour of the Homes Under the Hammer game and have some fun with it, okay? And that could be a little bit of a, a nice, relatively positive and, uh, and fun start to your day. Okay, now, here, here is a bit of a random one, which I quite like. This is from Wendy, hello Wendy. The age old question, does pineapple belong on a pizza? <laughs> well, it is asking me anything, so Wendy, uh, the reality is, right, 
Yes, but only if it's a Hawaiian. If it's with um, ham, then I think you can get away with pineapple on a pizza. I mean, if it's not a Hawaiian, then pineapple just, no. Now, I do like, I have to say, making my own pizzas. Well, not making pizzas. I was going to make the dough and you know, floppy hat and lots of flour everywhere. And whenever I think about that, I think of the, the mad chef in um, The Muppets. Do you remember the mad chef in The Muppets? <laughs> I think he was called the Swedish chef. Is that right? I, I think I was making pizza. Um, that's the image I have in my head. I love The Muppets. Do you like The Muppets? I love The Muppets. Muppets were awesome. Yeah, maybe it's a good time to revisit all the Muppet shows. Yeah, yeah, Gonzo, Miss Piggy. Um, Gonzo was so funny. <laughs> I was the accident pro. And he had those chickens, didn't he? And didn't he do? He had the chicken band. With the chickens clucking in time with the kind with the Glenman. I think it's called American Patrol. And there was the Gonzo's chickens. Dr. Teeth. Was it Dr. Teeth? Because the guy had like teeth. And the girl had like, and she talked really like, man, yeah, man. And she was like, really, yeah. And they had, oh no, what was the drummer called? Animal, 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 animal. <laughs> and those two geezers in the, uh, in the rafters or the box. It was great. Yeah, fantastic. No, it was awful. Boo, here's the, it went from good to bad or bad to good. Superb. Uh, small digression there. How did I get up to this? Oh, we're talking about pizza. So anyway, yes, making pizza takes me back to the Muppets. God, what a ramble. I wouldn't make the base, because it reminds me too much of the um, uh, guy in the Muppets, Swedish chef. Um, but I would get a, a margarita base, and I would add things to it to customise it, to personalise it. So a um, bit of pepper, perhaps, ham, whatever. Yeah. yeah. What's your favourite pizza? Tweet me or something. There we go. Thank you. Wendy, that was a bit of a ramble, wasn't it? Here's a question from DX. Uh, why aren't help to buy mortgages open to all housing? Well, you know what? I agree. It Wouldn't it be great if um, all first-time buyers were just eligible, not first-time buyers who are buying a new property only? It would certainly help to revitalise the uh, second-hand property market if we suffer at all uh, as a result of um, what's going on. At the moment, help to buy is... I mean, it's a really good scheme. It does have its caveats, and you've really got to read the small print. But the basic gist is that you will get a government-backed loan for a portion of your deposit on a new build. Bear in mind that often you have to pay a lot more for a new build, so sometimes you know, the benefits kind of cancel out a little bit, but it does at least help you to get in onto the ladder and get a property. There's lots of pros to it. All I would say is definitely read the small print and make sure that you know exactly what you're signing up for. Um, but should they be um, extended to new all housing? Absolutely, if possible. If you're first time buyer and need all the help you can get, why not include second hand properties in that? Um, question from Paul. Hi, Paul. Do you, Martel, Dion, uh, and Lucy enjoy social life outside homes and other? Well, I see Martel and Dion when we do the Lynx days, um, but that's about it. And Lucy, I see socially every now and again, but we always get on really well when we get together and we've just got our own little lives. They're all tra travelling around the country filming other stuff. Uh, I'm filming my little bits here and there, so I only see Dion and Martel on the, on the Lynx days and um, and obviously Lucy doesn't do the Lynx days anymore, but I try to see her socially. Uh, not uh, a lot, but, um, but whenever I do, it's always good to reminisce about Holmes and Little Hammer and, and contemplate other things. Paul again, are there any plans to have a box set of the whole of Holmes and the Hammer? You know what? <laughs> that would be amazing, right? And we've done 25 series. It's about 1,750 programmes. So it would actually be a fairly large-ish box set. There are no plans at the moment. However, I did discover something rather interesting the other day, and that is Holmes and the Hammer has obviously been sold to Amazon. And you can now get Holmes and the Hammer on Amazon Prime. And they've got some of the very early series. In fact, they've got series two, and I think three, four, five, and six. So that was 2003. So if you want to see Holmes and the Hammer from like, oh, well, 17 years ago, and how I've changed, which is probably a bit scary, but hey, <laughs> these things happen. Take a look, it's on Amazon Prime. But yeah, no plans specifically for a box set, which is a bit of a shame. Okay, flowers and chains say, in conventional sales, searches take months and can collapse a sale due to the weight. 
they're only they only valid six months so if they take three months are they worth it how important are they and why when the property market is slow do they take so long searches are the bane of people's life now they don't necessarily cost a lot you know and the whole scheme of things when you're buying a house uh, it's not a major expense it is as you quite rightly say the time that they take however most lenders will insist that you have searches done just to remind you a search um, well, you might have heard that term wonder what it is it's just um, well, various things come into searches. We're searching the local authorities' plans to find out if they've got things like road improvements plan that might cut across or nearby the house you're thinking about buying. Searches for any kind of developments uh, that they might be contemplating. There's specific searches like mining searches, which will tell you whether or not there are any mines or history of mines in the vicinity of that property. You'll probably have to have what's called a drainage and water supply search, and that will just show where the water supplies are and and the drains actually run and then other uh, other specific searches that might be required like an environmental search uh, if the site or the house is any anywhere near any kind of old uh, commercial or industrial facilities uh, which might have contaminated the land so are they a really important part of the buying process well i think they are okay and any solicitor would advise you to have a search done any lender will require a search to be done and i I think you would be fairly foolhardy to go ahead with a purchase uh, without actually having a survey done. I think that is probably uh, my advice on that one. Okay, so this is from Vicky. What house have you seen on Homes Under the Hammer that you attempted to buy yourself? Well, of course, by the time I get to it, it's already sold at the auction. So I can't actually uh, buy it. However, uh, there have been a few in the series uh, which I've just absolutely loved. Um, there was one, I think it was in um, the Newton Abbott, uh, right on the coast, overlooking the uh, overlooking the estuary, uh, like almost like a, a 270 degree panorama of the estuary with um, uh, Sheldon in the distance. I can't quite remember if I'm saying the right place, but Sheldon was opposite. So maybe it was Totnes or maybe it was Newton Abbott. Or, it was absolutely amazing. It was on a hillside. It used to be a former dog kennel. It was a real dog of a property. But uh, in terms of a location, it was absolutely fantastic. And, and that was one I was definitely definitely jealous of um it depends on where you're buying really you know there's lots of ones i just know that people have got an amazing deal uh, so from a financial point of view uh so yeah those are the ones that i've seen theo johnson just a few more to go is shared ownership a good idea well shared ownership shared purchase it is a way of linking up with other people maybe one or two people or maybe even three and buying a house together now that is an alternative to renting a house uh, and it certainly keeps your costs down you're sharing your costs with other people in certain parts of the country especially london it might be actually the only way you can uh, the only way you can do it the main thing is to draw up an agreement properly with a solicitor to make sure that everybody knows what the deal is if somebody in that partnership wants to sell what happens if somebody can't afford to pay their rent what happens what's the share of profits if a sale is made at any point it's really important to nail those things down early on uh, and not have those kind of conversations when either you're selling or something untoward happens and you have to sell so get those kind of things drawn up by a solicitor uh, get that shared ownership agreement drawn up by a solicitor and then actually you know mortgage companies can often look at it quite positively because they can see that you know the risk to them is slightly less you know your the amount of money you've got to potentially put towards a mortgage is higher and as long as it's all you know done properly uh, then it definitely can be a, a very interesting thing to to contemplate so uh, I definitely Definitely think it would be a, a, a great thing if uh, you, as I said you get you get those things drawn up so those are the questions for this week do send me in more questions as I said you can do that via martinroberts.co.uk you can do it on my Twitter which is um, at TV Martin Roberts do it on my Instagram which is Martin Roberts TV you can do it via this YouTube channel please tell people about this do like it like there's a button somewhere it says like do like it do subscribe tell your friends to subscribe send in your questions and i'll be back with more of these next week in the meantime keep happy keep healthy and yeah all the best from me